simulation lab, we're able to create scenarios that you might not otherwise be quite as involved with in the hospital because they are emergency situations. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for you to practice skills and what you've learned from our didactic classroom on how to respond to an emergency. By practicing here, you can try on different roles and become more comfortable that when you get to the real situation, you will actually function at a more optimal level and not be quite as nervous. It also gives us a op great opportunity to talk about what you've learned to answer your questions and to um, generally understand the process better, the nursing process. I like the simulation lab because here you are the nurse and you know, you're not, um, w when you're in the clinical setting, you're not always um, first and foremost, you know, sometimes even patients still ask for their nurse and, um, you want to play nurse as much as you can, but you're still a student and the patients know that. So here you are the nurse and uh, you're expected to be the primary nurse or maybe secondary nurse. Um, my previous degree, I, we medical assistant, we didn't have training on mannequins. And you're walking into the doctor's office, drawing blood your first time on a patient, giving a shot the first time on a real human, so like the margin of error and learning skills. But now that we have the Sims, we can learn all different scenarios, actually practice, and we feel comfortable going for the first time. On I, I, I think the um, learning with the mannequins is very experiential. The students can do scenarios over and over and become more confident, build their, not only their skill development, but just their communication, um, their assessment skills, their ability to um, perform, and to feel comfortable in that role. I think the the coolest part is the technology, that you can listen to real lung sounds and um, real heart tones. And, I mean, you can work your whole clinical experience and maybe never see all of them. Um, so to hear uh, murmur or to hear bronchi um, is definitely, would you guys agree, definitely something that uh, you know, you're, you're going to get the opportunity here where you weren't somewhere else. The mannequins here are very, very realistic. They can cry, they can scream, cough. You can even bleed. Um, you can do anything that you can necessarily do on a real life patient in the hospital, you can do to these mannequins. It's a great learning tool. It's very, very interesting. You know, you walk in the room and you're not really sure what's going to happen. And by the time you do it two or three times, you're we're kind of a team and we work together. And, um, you know, Amy took over one position, uh, massaging the fungus, and I took her pressure, and then we switched, and she got the methogen. Uh, and, well. and do you feel that you understand sort of the priorities, yes. what should be done, mm -hmm. how to do it, right. how to teamwork and be more efficient? Right. The time? first time that I did it, I immediately went for the oxygen, like the ABCs, put that <laughs> oxygen on. Yeah. However, with this situation, she was bleeding to death. Her airway was fine, it was opening. That my main concern was to make sure that the bleeding stops. Well, right. why is she bleeding? What do we need to do from that? And as long as she's breathing, we don't need to put the oxygen on. Right. So does, has it changed, do you think, the way you assess a patient going in the room? Yeah. Yes. It builds more confidence. It builds confidence? Yeah. You felt more comfortable? I did. Yeah. How, how like, did you... word cues. Like, she's like, oh, I just don't feel well. I'm dizzy. Well, dizzy is a first sign of, like, you know, low blood pressure, which is really to, you know, blood loss. I mean, you know, in pregnant women, the blood loss is something you're going to look for immediately mm -hmm. because to make sure the uterus is contracted. I could, I could program the sim lady to say, don't touch me, you haven't washed your hands, if you hadn't washed your hands before you came. <laughs> and it's much easier to take that comment from a, a sim patient than from a real patient. But you'll never forget to wash your hands <laughs> after that. You don't feel so strong performing a skill or doing something. You have the opportunity here to do it as many times as you need to feel strong on the floor. And that's a lot of... It's a really great thing that not a lot of schools get to have. SVC Simulation Lab will provide me what I need to have when I become a nurse, um, start my role in the healthcare world. I'll feel more confident about my skills um, and have a better, under better understanding of what's going on. When there's an emergency on a unit, students generally have to step back and let the experienced RNs and medical staff function. Here in the Simulation Lab, we can have students practicing in those roles so that if they happen to be in an emergency situation or the only one there, they know what they need to do. For me, 
I've always wanted to be an ER nurse, and I feel like leaving Southern Vermont College um, since lab, when we're able to practice emergency after emergency, um, I will have a better grasp on the skills that I need to walk out and to go into an ER without being nervous, being scared, because like I said, we could press pause in here and debrief, but in real life, it's all hands on deck. We can't press pause. I think future prospective students that are thinking about coming to Southern Vermont College will have a great advantage with the simulation lab. They'll really, really enjoy it, and I think it'll help them determine whether or not nursing is for them, because it certainly has yeah. for us.